Hi. I've got a question for you. Does getting something wrong matter if it's for the right reason? What if you're really wrong? Like wrong by a factor of a million. Does that warrant a correction? Even if the overall point you were making is valid. Maybe I'm just being a pedant about this, but I think it does matter. Let's see if you agree. This is a story about accuracy and activism, trust, unreliable AI, Lego enthusiasts, and the crazy making post-truth era we're living in. And here's where it starts. Microplastics, our most popular current panic headline. So I saw this clip while I was researching my latest review, which was about Emily Oster and which you can watch here. Anyway, it was all about microplastics, which I, for one, am not a fan of. I want to give you a few facts about this so you can put those panic headlines in context. She explained what they are. They are tiny pieces of plastic, beads, fibers that are coming off of old plastic as it decays. And how you're exposed to them. You're exposed through the water that you drink, through the food that you eat, and through the air that you breathe. Microplastics are quite ubiquitous and we are all exposed to them pretty much all the time. Yeah, not good. And then she said this. People say you eat a credit card's worth of microplastics a week. And when I heard her say that, I thought, she's right. People do say that. I've heard it a lot. You're ingesting up to a credit card of plastic a week. Every week, without even realizing it, we are consuming the equivalent of an entire credit card in plastic. Every week, we ingest a credit card size of Plastic. Random fitness influencers say it on social media with scary animations. Environmental groups say it with photos of people shoveling spoonfuls of plastic into their mouths. Universities say it. News outlets say it. National Geographic says it. The United Nations says it. Rob Bonta says it. Yeah, Rob Bonta. Hey Siri, who is Rob Bonta? Robert Andres Bonta is a Filipino and American lawyer and politician who has served as the 34th Attorney General of California since 2021. Would you like to hear more? No. So, I was very surprised to hear what she said next. That's actually not true. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of times less than that, so good news there. Wait a minute. What do you mean it's thousands and thousands and thousands of times less than that? Where did the credit card thing come from then? Why does everyone keep saying it? I said goodbye to my kids, explained that mummy would be going on the computer again for a while, and started a new collection of browser tabs. First step was the impulsive instant Google search. A credit card of microplastics a week eaten? I wrote. Yes. Said the AI overview. The statement that people may be consuming the equivalent of a credit card's worth of microplastics, approximately five grams, each week is accurate. The AI overview told me. This estimate comes from a study combining data from over 50 studies on plastic ingestion, according to the University of Newcastle. I was confused. Was this lady full of shit? Or was the AI overview full of shit? After all, it did include a disclaimer that said, AI responses may include mistakes. So I followed the links that the AI overview was based on. One was to a 2019 news article by the University of Newcastle about the findings of their study. Plastic ingestion by people could be equating to a credit card a week. The next link was to an article from the very same day by the World Wildlife Fund, which it turns out had commissioned the University of Newcastle study. The WWF had based a global PR campaign around it. You may have seen this very striking image they produced of a credit card between chopsticks being dipped in soy sauce. Or this video, which is still on their website and YouTube channel. The third link the AI overview gave was to a 2022 story in The Guardian, which referenced the 2019 study. So. Clearly, this all came back to the 2019 study. Which, by the way, was still being reviewed for publication at the time this whole credit card thing was being announced. So anyone who heard it and thought, gee, that sounds like a lot, I wonder how they reached that figure, would have to wait a full year before they could have a look at the full methodology and supplementary data. Okay, I thought. 
2019 was a while ago. Maybe there's been some more research done since then and that's what this lady's referring to when she says it's thousands and thousands and thousands of times less than that. I returned to my Google page to see what the actual results of my search were. And the very first result, directly underneath the AI overview that said the credit card thing was accurate, was a link to a 2022 scientific paper saying it wasn't. The calculation of one credit card per week contains severe errors. Sounds like someone finally got to take a look at their methodology. Righto, let's take a look at this study. Not gonna lie, it involves a lot of maths that goes way over my head. But I do think I get the gist of it which is that the methodology and the calculations used in the Uni of Newcastle World Wildlife Fund study are flawed, do not make sense, and considerably overestimate how much microplastic we're munching on by several orders of magnitude. Which means... Which means that a human eats a credit card worth of microplastics not every week, but every 23,000 years. Okay, well, here's some maths I can do. There are 52.14 weeks in a year, so in 23,000 years, there are 1,199,285.71 weeks. I haven't factored in leap years, I'm not sure how much difference that would make, but I think we can safely say that this paper is saying that the credit card in a week figure is wrong by a factor of over a million. But that's a pretty big call. Would the World Wildlife Fund not correct a mistake like that with more than this pissy update? Please note that since the publication of this peer-reviewed study in 2019, we acknowledge that scientific knowledge has evolved since then to give us a more accurate picture of how much plastic we are ingesting. We therefore recommend checking the latest studies for more up-to-date information. Doesn't have quite the same ring to it as, oh, sorry guys, we're like a million times wrong about this. And what about the Uni of Newcastle, which has a code of conduct requiring everyone to ensure the accuracy and reliability of research? Shouldn't they have issued a correction? I couldn't find one. And I started thinking, maybe they're not acknowledging this because they don't accept it. What if they dispute the maths in this paper? What if this is just big microplastic propaganda put out to muddy the waters about their pollution problem? like? fossil fuel companies with climate change, or tobacco companies with lung cancer. I know how bad guys work. Who wrote this paper? Martin Pletz from the Department of Polymer Engineering and Science at a university in Austria. I opened a new tab and Googled Martin Pletz so that I could do my own research on this researcher. And the first thing I noticed was that this guy bears a striking resemblance to the disguise emoji. Maybe he was an undercover operative. I needed to know more about him. Fortunately, he has a website with an about section, which says he's enthusiastic about cycling, food, Lego bricks, and engineering mechanics. Lego bricks, interesting. You know what Lego's made out of, don't you? You know what size it is, don't you? Some might even think of it as very small plastic. So we have a suspicious looking character who works at the Department of Plastics Technology, which is a globally recognized research partner for industry, who himself admits to being enthusiastic about something that could reasonably be described as microplastic and has authored a paper saying we're not eating as much of it as the World Wildlife Fund would have you think. Who are you gonna trust? The panda charity or the plastics nerd? Fortunately, you don't have to decide between these two because maths is maths. It's either right or it's wrong, whether it's done by a potential supervillain or a panda. So I opened a new tab and started searching for challenges to Martin Pletz's maths and I came up empty handed. No one seemed to be disputing his findings, but what did become apparent was that if I had worded my initial Google search just slightly differently, I would have been on a very different journey from the get-go. Because if you ask the computer, are we really eating a credit card of plastic a week? The AI overview tells you, no. The widely circulated claim that people eat the equivalent of a credit card's worth of plastic each week is likely an overstatement. And the first link it provides this time is to Martin Pletz's paper. 
and to a whole bunch of other people on the internet and in the mainstream media who have corrected the credit card claim. You're actually consuming a credit card's worth of plastic every single week without even knowing it. Except you're probably not. So, why do we still hear this severe error repeated as fact? Well, partly because the credit card genie got out of the bottle in 2019 and it's very hard to put it back in there. That whole process has been excellently broken down by YouTuber Hank Green. I strongly recommend you watch this video where he explains each step of the process. The fact that this definitely untrue statement was spread in so many legitimate news organizations has been quite annoying to me, but it's also been something of a curiosity to me. Like, these places do fact check. They don't just publish whatever comes across their desk. Don't they? This was an 11-step process. Step one, the World Wildlife Fund is worried about plastics, and they should be. Yeah, 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 they should be. But can we just go back to the people who got this wrong in the first place? Because that's what I'm kind of stuck on. Because Hank Green wouldn't have even known yet that the numbers looked to be off by a factor of a million. He made his video before Martin Pletz's paper came out. Because even if it hadn't been wrong, that paper was still badly misreported. But anyway, let's just take a look at this comment on Hank Green's video from a fellow scientist who wrote, I wonder what the writers of the article feel about this. Embarrassed? Bewildered? Amused? I had been wondering the same thing. What was the response of the initial researchers to all of this? And the World Wildlife Fund, for that matter? It sucks to make a big mistake, especially about something so important. They must feel really terrible. Did they think maybe they ought to try to correct this million times wrong meme that had now spread around the world? And the only place I could find that had asked them was this article in Trademag R&D World. Microplastics are bad, but ignoring science is worse. This had clearly been written by someone as annoyed as I was that this meme-promoted science had pushed a simply crazy, obviously not correct, nonsensical value to become cemented as fact in the public consciousness. I see you, Mark Jones. A kindred spirit. Now, Mark Jones says he emailed the WWF to ask them about their chopsticks image, but got no reply. He also exchanged several emails with one of the authors of the Uni of Newcastle study. He asked them about the Pletz paper and whether they wanted to offer a rebuttal. But when he asked if he could quote from their exchange, he was instead provided with this quote. The authors have confirmed they are still behind this significant work which has been helping to reduce the adverse impacts of plastics. We will stand by it until someone proves that there is zero plastic exposure to humans. I want you to know how hard I tried not to play the next clip. But of all the voices in my head right now, this is the one screaming the loudest. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! What do you mean you stand by this work? Are you saying you still think your numbers are right? Or are you saying it doesn't matter if your numbers are wrong, wildly wrong apparently, because they're for a noble cause? I wrote to the Uni of Newcastle and the World Wildlife Fund to see if I could get a better response than Mark Jones did. I didn't. Here's their replies to me, which you can read in full for yourselves. You'll note they did not respond to my question about whether they accept Martin Pletz's claim that their calculations contain severe errors and gave results that are wrong by a factor of a million. The uni said a retraction or correction is not warranted and the World Wildlife Fund said it's a science-based organisation. This whole thing, this isn't even about microplastics for me. This is like a meta issue about reality. Like, I get that microplastics are bad and a very real problem. And that even if we are only ingesting a speck of a credit card a week, that might still be enough to be doing damage. They have apparently found microplastics in our blood, brain, lungs, placenta, semen, not mine obviously, but yeah, I totally support efforts to address this. This is about establishing basic facts around an issue. Do we do that anymore? Can we do that anymore? Of course we can. You've just got to look for the people doing it. 
Now, this is a great article in the conversation about a recent paper in which an international group of experts summarised the current state of knowledge after reviewing more than 7,000 published studies on microplastics. It explains why microplastics are so alarming while being realistic about exposure levels. Some estimates, such as humans ingesting a credit card's worth of plastic every week, are gross overstatements. Guess where that link goes? Yep, Martin Pletzer's paper. The only problem with this conversation piece is that it doesn't seem to rank very highly in the Google results, no matter what I ask the computer. I really need to stop taking these crazy pills.